What's going on guys, it's Nick here, back with another video. In this one, I'll be going over some players who have suffered injuries or are recovering from injuries recently and how we should view them at their current ADP. Before we start, let's do the stat of the day, yesterday's stat. According to Brandon Thorne, who was someone I respect for offensive line analysis, the bottom four offensive lines this season are the Cardinals, the Texans, the Dolphins, and the question was, what's the fourth team? The answer is the Bengals, and RJ got that one right. Today's stat, among quarterbacks with at least 100 dropbacks last season, who had the highest completion percentage off play action? All right, we'll start things off with Amari Cooper, and the latest report out of Cowboys camp is that Cooper's foot injury is more of a muscle strain. Now, we've heard a bunch of different things from an inflamed plantar fascia to a heel strain, now more of a muscle strain. Listen. The Cowboys don't seem overly concerned with this, and really, I'm not that concerned. He's still got a decent amount of time to rest up before week one, so I do think the most likely outcome is that he starts the season close to 100%, and he has said that he's played through this injury before. But if this is something that scares you, then just don't draft him, you know? It's not like you're going to lose your league because you didn't take Cooper in where he's going like late second to early third round you know you're not going to lose your league because of that there's still a bunch of studs on the board at every position where he's going again i am still fine taking him but if you're not then don't seattle wide receivers is up next and dk metcalf had the knee scope surgery done earlier this week and the surgery looks like it went well and he hasn't suffered any additional swelling post-surgery he's still doubtful for week one but you weren't drafting him to start week one anyways, so that's not a huge deal. Um, I still think you can take him in the final rounds of drafts, but know that he fell in the NFL draft a little bit because he had suffered a decent amount of injuries in college and he was still a little bit unproven. So he should be good to go week two, week three, um, which is going to help the Seahawks out a lot because... He's not their only injured wide receiver. They also have David Moore, who's now going to miss time with a shoulder injury. And this one's a little bit more concerning. We don't know the exact diagnosis as of recording this, but he is going to miss some time. And they've said he could be out for a while. He is getting a second opinion, so we'll see what comes of that. Um, but honestly, like Tyler Lockett is looking like a cash game lock and just a great pick in the early rounds of drafts. We know that his target share is going to be massive, so it doesn't matter if this is a low-volume passing attack because they're just going to feed him the ball. I mean, he's all the way up now to my wide receiver 17, three above ECR, four above ADP, and if you do want to see my full rankings, my full projections, check them out at our website, thefantasyfootballadvice.com. Next player is Equinemia St. Brown, and he should miss a month to a month and a half with a high ankle sprain. We're not drafting him, of course. That's not why I bring him up. It's just going to solidify 100%. If you had any doubt, Adams, MVS, Allison. Those are the top three wide receivers in the Packers offense. It also means Jake Kumaro could see a few snaps as well. You're not drafting him in 10, 12, even 14 team leagues. But if you're in a 16 team league, you need someone in the final round. Rodgers likes him, so maybe he gets a few snaps a season. And if Allison or MVS were to go down, Kumaro could still step in. So in a very, very deep league, you can target him. Uh, Derek Henry resumed practicing earlier this week, and it looks like he's good to go for week one. We figured this whole time he was going to be good to go week one, but we do see him returning now. Um, you can still suffer a setback with basically every single injury. But it wasn't an ankle, it wasn't a hamstring, which are the two that we would expect to see the highest rate of setbacks for. So the most likely outcome is still that he's going to be 100% to start the season. His ADP has dropped into the mid-fourth round, despite you know staying one of the healthier running backs throughout his career. And all the running backs going ahead of him behind him, they've suffered injuries as well. So the injuries shouldn't be why he's, his ADP is dropping. Um, he's in line for north of 300 touches. And 1,500 yards and 15 touchdowns is well within his range of outcomes, you know. And while he is a zero in the passing game, I mean, not not zero receptions, but let's be honest, he's not going to catch very many footballs. Look at the running backs going two ahead of and two behind him. I mean, Marlon Mack is limited in the passing game as well. Gordon might miss a half a season. Ingram has just as low of a projection as Henry does in the receiving game. And Sonny Michel has eight career receptions through 16 weeks. So yeah, you know, he's not going to see 50 targets to go along with 300 carries, 
but neither will any of the running backs going even remotely close to him. Jordan Reed suffered yet another concussion. That'll be his seventh reported concussion. And it's really a shame, you know, he's been unable to stay healthy in his career. He would have had such an incredible career. But at this point, I know the upside is there because he's going in basically last rounds of drafts. But you just can't do it. He's not going to stay healthy. So draft other flyers instead. Uh, Ronald Jones uh, returned to practice, returned in this last preseason game. He had been recovering from a hyperextended knee, which was never a big concern. We knew he was going to be back. But the dude had four carries for eight yards in his preseason game. I know that we don't look at preseason to evaluate anything, but it's concerning given that he was bad last year. There were reports that were hyping him up in camp, but then any beat writer was like, well, yeah, but he's not actually doing that well. He's been really bad in the preseason. He didn't convert his only target. I mean, the Tampa Bay backfield, like I said earlier this week, is just one I would avoid. It's just not a situation that's fantasy friendly. They're not going to be a good run game. And they're splitting it amongst, you know, a few different running backs. So just stay away from this entire entire backfield. Cam Newton's next. And he left Thursday's preseason game with a mild foot sprain. And the Panthers have said they are cautiously optimistic that he'll be ready for week one. With that being said, quarterback is so deep. So you don't need to draft an injured one. If you really like Cam Newton and you want to take him in a super flex league, or you just like drafting two quarterbacks in a normal league and you want to take him as your two, go for it. But where his ADP is right now, and again, there hasn't really been enough time for the ADP to change after the injury, where it's going right now, it's just not worth it. Just draft someone else. If he falls into like the 12th, the 13th round, well, honestly, yeah, just go for it at that point because you can easily just drop him and pick up someone else if you really need to, or you can just drop one of your late round flyers pick up a quarterback, and when he comes back, you've got a really nice value. So I'm not against it, but it's not a pick I would make anymore because, again, there's like 20 startable quarterbacks, so just take one that's healthy. Kenyon Drake is next, and he shed his walking boot and began jogging a few days ago. They initially said that he would be out for just a while. They never really threw down a timeline, but they never declared him out for week one. So despite not really knowing his status, it's still possible that he returns in week one. And with Belage looking terrible in his preseason snaps, knowing that he was terrible last season, I'd still take Belage over Drake. But at this point, I'm probably not taking either. I mean, this is a bad offense, a bad offensive line. Belage was bad as a rookie. So even though he was being hyped up in camp, he was bad as a rookie. And he's been bad in the preseason. So I have nothing to go off of for drafting Balazs other than Drake was potentially going to miss a bunch of time and maybe he improved from last season. But it doesn't look like he improved. Line still stinks. Team still stinks. And when Drake's back, which maybe he misses one game, but once he's back, Drake's going to be taking third down work. They're going to be splitting early down work. It's not worth it. So stay away from this entire backfield, to be honest. Uh, DJ Chark, he suffered a concussion in the Jaguars preseason game. He was only like a late round flyer in, you know, 16 team leagues. But I bring it up because I want to remind everyone, D.D. Westbrook is the clear cut top option this past game. He's the slot receiver, but he's the top option in the passing game. They don't have a good tight end, or at least a tight end that's like going to command a bunch of targets. Marquis Lee's still recovering from his ACL. So now with Chark with a concussion and Chris Conley being Chris Conley, like it's Didi and that's it. I mean, he is the top option in the passing game. And then we know that Fournette is going to be heavily involved in the passing game this season. He's up to my wide receiver 31 right now, seven above ECR, six above ADP. And he's honestly one of the best picks in the draft. He's in a very similar situation to Tyler Lockett, both not in prolific passing offenses, but it doesn't matter because they're going to see a massive share of their team's targets, so you need to draft them. George Kittle, quick note, back to practicing. He was sidelined with a very minor calf injury, but he was never expected to miss any time, so I really have nothing else to say about that. If, if you were at all concerned about the injury and you weren't drafting him because of it, We'll stop that because he's fine. So you can continue drafting him wherever you were before you heard about the injury. Uh, Kiki Cutie, he's still out with the ankle injury. We have not been told if it was a high ankle sprain. If it wasn't, all they said was it wasn't major, which I guess means that it wasn't a high ankle sprain. But regardless, he's questionable for week one. And since you were never drafting him 
to start for your team right away, his ADP shouldn't have changed that much. It, of course, needs to go down because anyone who suffers an ankle injury misses this much time. Well, they could also suffer a setback, and he's also been very injured in his short career. So, yeah, his ADP needed to drop. But it's dropped to the point where, I mean, pretty good value. Mid-12th round, you know, I'd target him at that point. So we like the talent. We like the offense. We don't like that he keeps getting hurt. But in the mid-12th, worth the upside. Anthony Miller is recovering from an ankle injury, and a report came out that he's probably going to have a limited role early in the season, which is not great news, and it's a red flag for anyone to say they're probably not going to have a big role early in the season. I've removed him as a target in the rankings. You can still draft him, but to be honest, the best scenario is looking like don't draft him, let someone else do it, watch the snaps, watch how this team plays early in the season. If you still like him and he's not producing, then trade for him or he might get dropped. But I don't think we need to be drafting him at this point. There are other options that don't have reports that they're not going to be used very much early in the season. Cooper Cup, and this one isn't a new injury, it's the old one. A report came out that he's actually timed better post-surgery in his quickness and agility test um, than he did before having the ACL tear. Seems a bit hard to believe, but if that's true, then it's great news for this offense. Um, they looked very different when he went down. I know Reynolds was fine, but they clearly missed Cup uh, as a very significant part of that offense. And I haven't taken him in a mock draft yet, and I probably won't because I still have him ranked below ECR, below ADP. But if you think he's back and you want a piece of this offense, the cheapest part of the passing offense really, then worth a shot. Um, so I sign off on the pick now. I didn't before, but these reports coming out that he's good to go. He's back from the injury. You can draft him now. Mike Evans, he missed the third preseason game and a good amount of practices with a leg injury. That's all they've told us is leg injury. The Bucks don't seem to be concerned, so I'm still drafting Evans in the late second round if he's there. Um, but this is another situation like Amari Cooper. You know, if this ambiguity scares you in terms of you don't know exactly what the injury is, you don't know what their timeline is, just don't draft him because it's the late second round and there's still a ton of awesome options on the board. I still will. If you don't want to, don't. We actually need to talk about two more players. So I was hoping that no one would get hurt tonight and I could just stick with the above. That was the end of the video. But as you guys know, that wasn't the case. So we'll start with Lamar Miller. He very likely tore his ACL, meaning that his season is done. And there are two possible outcomes for what can happen here. One, the Texans can finally be the team that gives Duke Johnson the early down work that he deserves, given that he's a really good running back and he deserves a chance at some early down workload. The other is that they trade for a running back. They could trade for Melvin Gordon. They could trade for someone who's not as prolific of a running back. It would surprise me a little bit if they traded for Gordon, but it's definitely not out of the question. Hopefully, though, they use Duke Johnson as their three down back. They do have Demaria Crockett, who they like, but it's Duke Johnson. So if you really wanted a name in a deeper league to add, because someone obviously already has Duke Johnson, Demaria Crockett, easier guy. But I, I think there's a chance they give Duke Johnson the full workload. Where am I ranking him? So I'm going to rank him with the idea that he, it could happen. They could give him the full workload, which would make him great, but they also could trade for him. So I just brought him up to where he would be if they gave him the full workload and then just brought him back just a little bit to take care of that risk. That makes him viable in the fifth round of 12 team half PPR leagues. Obviously he's better under any score of PPR. So a bump up in PPR, a bump down in standard. I don't think this makes him a fourth round pick. That's still a little bit too early, especially since we don't know if they're going to trade for someone. We don't know exactly how they're going to use them. Um, I'd still prefer if you could get him in the sixth, but he's a fifth round pick at this point. Um, doesn't This news does not change any of the pass catchers. You're still drafting them exactly where you were before. Um, the other bit of news is obviously Andrew Luck's retirement. This, of course, came as a shock to all of us. I'm just sitting there watching the Red Sox game. And that's how I hear. I hear about this watching the Red Sox game and the announcer being like, hey, did you hear Andrew Luck's retiring? And I'm just like, fall out of my chair. Like, what just happened? Absolutely crazy. Didn't see it coming. But I don't really know how this is going to affect each player's ADP. You know, it's an obvious downgrade for all the Colts skill position players. But I'm interested to see if the public overreacts. You know, this is 
crazy because people, as this is happening, are in their drafts and a bunch of people have drafts the day this video goes up on Sunday. So I'm very interested to see what people's reaction is when they just hear the news. They don't have anywhere to go. They just have to make a decision. I do think, though, people will overreact because we've already seen how offenses run under Brissett, and it was a downgrade. But here's the thing. That's not the same Brissett that we saw two and three years ago. It's not the same one. Reports have been very positive about his development, and he's now had time to learn under Brady and backing up Luck, and he's not a rookie anymore. He's not a sophomore anymore. This is now his fourth season. Again, it's a downgrade, but Brissett's not a terrible quarterback. He'll be fine. He'll be able to move the offense. So you can still take Hilton. You can still take Mack. And I'm praying that the public sees this and they're like, I'm not even going to draft Hilton. Right now, I've adjusted my rankings. T.Y. Hilton's my wide receiver 17, which gives him a mid to late fourth round ADP. And Mack is my running back 21, which is a, kind of the same range, mid to late fourth round. They're in no way players to target. These are not guys you're just going after in drafts. And if you want to stay away, then I get it. Just do so. But there's a chance that you're able to get these two in like the fifth round if you're drafting right now and people don't know what to do. And I think at that point, it's worth it being able to get these two in the fifth round because that's the point where talent just starts to fall off and where everyone is just not a sure thing anymore. For the rest of the team, I wasn't drafting Funches or Campbell before, so obviously we're not doing it now. Ebron is still fine to take a little bit later than he was going, but again, not someone you need to target. So those are the latest injury and retirement updates around the league. If anyone else gets hurt tonight, I'm not making this video again, so I'll talk about it in future videos. Remember, you can stay up to date as things change with our latest rankings, players to target, and avoid at our website, thefantasyfootballadvice.com. But that's the end of this one. I hope you all did enjoy. If you did, how about hitting the like button? If you're new here, how about subscribing to the channel? But thanks for watching.